there that do not know what a stock floor body drop is compared to a traditional body drop. Uh, traditional you end up leaving the frame full height and you cut cut along the, the cab both sides and end up dropping the cab and patching all that sheet metal back in along the doors. Um, it's actually how the navigator was built and I wouldn't recommend doing it that way ever to anybody. We try to always talk them in the stock floor because it you keep that cab space. Like the Navigator, I lost three to four inches of, of cab space just by cutting it and dropping the cab like that. But body drop was also not really planned on the Navigator compared to this one. From day one, we knew this one was getting body dropped. The Navigator uh, basically we cut it up so much that in the end we were like, why not just body drop it? And I'm thankful that we did, but I just wish we would have done stock floor. But the only cutting on this floor is actually hidden underneath the center console. It's where the transmission got lifted with the front clip. And basically room for the drive shaft. The only real cutting with the stock floor body drop is the front tubs and the drive shaft tunnel. Now it isn't even that big because we ended up going with a two piece drive shaft which saves a ton of floor. So there's a carrier bearing uh, probably around, around this point of the cab, right around there. And, uh, and then the second piece goes up just, just enough. to make the suspension work and that way we don't have to, to do a ton of cutting in the cab and lose, lose that, that space that if it was a one piece drive shaft we probably would have been right underneath the seat with how, how high the tunnel would have been. Um, this vehicle is a four wheel drive vehicle from the start which was a ton of work in itself. Uh, the vehicle was delivered and that's when we found out it was actually a four-wheel drive and not a two-wheel drive. I didn't even know they made Harley Davidson's uh, as a four-wheel drive vehicle. But I know now. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was a huge pain in the butt. But we made it happen after a ton of research and, and swapping over the transmission internals and stuff like that. I uh, got that sucker to work. So let's check out the rear suspension. So before we move on to the rear suspension, uh, check out some of the chassis work that, that we knocked out on this thing. Some custom bent tubing. I'm gonna have to definitely share some pictures of all that going in. That there's a lot of work underneath here. Uh, dual exhaust now instead of the, the single um, y pipe into into a muffler and then out to a dual that this thing had. That it, it'll eventually be able to run the exhaust through through those holes that we cut into that cross member and um, be able to continue them as far back as he as he wants. But just for the time being, getting the thing running, we put in our exhaust and um, yeah, they can kind of take it from here. That cross member right there. Pretty cool cross member, probably one of my favorites that I've built. Um, the tabs on it go wrap around the, the whole bar there, and then same as the upper. Top and bottom has inch and inch and a half tubing, DLM tubing. kind of gave it a cool look and then the rear suspension we've got a bag on bar set up I always try to get the bag on the bar uh, versus over the axle as it's just it rides 
a hundred times better. A lot more work, but definitely worth worth it in the end. Uh, our wishbone up top, as you can see, is mounted uh, on each side of the drive shaft, and then goes back, and so it has a, as much triangulation as we can get into it. Um, I'll get the light on there. So I put this bar underneath, wrapping underneath the drive shaft, and then there's also kind of hard to see. There's also a bar going over the drive shaft uh, to each upper upper link. So it makes a big old wishbone, and this thing handles great on the road. Got your AccuAir height sensors back there. And again, Conditec 2600s, kind of my go to when it comes to bags. I definitely like them. And for the cost, you know, everyone's got their budget. Um, I have Slam SS8s on the Navigator, but, you know, they're also another $40 a bag. So if they want to in the end, they can swap those out and do whatever they feel if they want to go that route. Again, shots on the rear. There we go. Some shock tabs coming off of the, the plated um, upper and lower mount on the axle for the link bars. It swoops down and kind of a cool little We'll set up back here. And then we have uh, by air our number one choice. Two on each side. So four total. Going into some some beast line there. That runs into your tank. Something we like to do is always kind of add the emergency fill. That one is so that if it's uh, stuck anywhere, or if you need to inflate a tire, take a tire off, you can definitely do it with the setup. You got two four gallon tanks stacked one on top of the other, and make sure you drain your tanks. And it's very important for, for the system uh, to not get water in it. It is an aluminum tank setup, which uh, so there's it's a rust free product that we put out there and you know some of them still have those steel tanks and navigator being one of them that's something that I'm gonna have to go through pretty soon here and then we got a 15 gallon tank on the back aluminum fuel cell Customer's got some wicked plans for the, the suspension and chassis. Once he starts dismantling it, uh, they're gonna probably powder coat it. Um, keep the body black, powder coat the frame and chassis. Uh, sick ass color that I'll let that one just kind of be there for uh, a future debut. I'm not gonna give that one up. And then all your electrical tied up in here. We got zero gauge uh, going to a split. And then, then splits to a four gauge to two pack 80, 80 amp relays, and then go to the compressors. Still got a little cleanup to do underneath here, you know, but testing's done. Uh, fuck, like I said, 350 miles on this thing. Took it to the beach the other day, which was a, about a 110 mile trip for us uh, there and back. Lucky to have the beach that way. And then as far as the notch goes, we got some, I uh, made this from, from flat metal. Uh, we quarter inch plate, basically cut our shape out. It goes up and over, like a horseshoe type shape. And plates down into the frame. So that's all from flat quarter inch steel. And then uh, 
on top and bottom we got three inch wide uh, plating that I bought in basically a three by quarter inch long strip of that so I can bend it up and over and weld it all up. Like I said, there's a ton of pictures that I'll be able to share with you guys. And you can also go on the Instagram and check out Project Sinister Hog. Uh, Sinister Hog being Harley Davidson edition and Sinister Bill. So be sure to check that out on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, you can check out Sinister underscore custom underscore concepts on Instagram for our page. And give us a like, give us a shout out that you saw the YouTube videos. Let us know how far this video gets. So that's it for the rear suspension. Uh, part three is gonna be sheet metal bed, um, a brake booster, a wild brake booster setup to show you guys. So stay tuned, check out part three.